Hello YouTubers, I'm back again. Been away for a while, yeah, it's summer. No done any videos, been too busy. Sorting scooters, chairs, power chairs, etc. Um, easing off a little bit now, mid-October. So I went and got this scooter here from a customer. It's a drive medical invoice scooter. A uh, customer was telling me that it was kind of jerking. And she says she wants new batteries. And I says, well, eesh. Everybody goes in batteries because I think the batteries are the issue. He says, well, let's have a look at it first um, before you, you end up buying batteries because it's not usually you need batteries for jerking, but customers think that's the only thing they can think of and that's what they buy. Not always the case. Jerking usually is kind of motor, electric brake, throttle pod problems, um, etc., etc. Now, I uh, went outside on site there and the lady from Ayrshire coming up uh, Scotland and she says it was jerking and there was a wire hanging down and somebody done a repair but still made no difference whatsoever. So I called on site, found the scooter, switched ignition on, no power whatsoever. So it's got no power on the dash display and I'll show you that. Uh, switch the key on, nothing. Now usually when I switch the key on and the needle doesn't move, the LED, LED lights don't come on, I usually press the horn button because that doesn't require a lot of power. So maybe there is power going up there, but uh, just not enough to power it up, but enough to get the horn going. Tried the horn, it's no working either. So she wasn't using it over the weekend. So I took it to the workshop, it was raining there, it was miserable. So threw it in the van, brought it to the workshop, and here we go. Let's make a video on this. So my usually first port of call, especially when you switch it on and there's no power, is to check the voltage on the batteries. Now usually I go to the charging point here. I use the two outside connectors, there's a three pin socket, and it's usually one and three. Now it doesn't matter which way you put your multimeter on, as long as you put it in the two outside ones. So your multimeter, again, DC voltage is there. Your two connections here. And all I do is I'll stick them in there. Okay, just to see if there's actually power getting up there. We don't know. So anyway, 24.83. So you can see 24.83 volts. There's a wee minus on it there. Uh, so you can actually see that I put it on the wrong way around. So positive is on the other side here. So I know this power getting to the battery is 24.83. It has been charged. What else would I do if I didn't get any power here? What else would I do? I would, I would check the fuses in the back. Now, I'll take you there. So what we have here, we've got fuses here, here. We've got fuses in the battery here. Another one here. And there's another one here. Now, this big heavy one here, 10 amp fuse and that, you just unclip that. And you check all these fuses. That's your charging one, big, big heavy duty wires on there. I can't actually see where the chap joined the cable together. And I did notice, if you have a look along here, we need to repair that because it's, it's exposed. I put a bit of insulating tape on here. Or if we can get that connector on, I'll put a heat shrink on that there. So you check all these fuses here. Why we're not getting power up there. So you check the fuses to make sure. That one I know is okay because I'm getting power up there. If I disconnect that fuse, um, I'll get zero volts up there. As well as you check the connections. If they're corroded, don't just look at the fuse. Take the fuse out and check the terminal connections to see they're nice and clean. You wanna make sure they're, they're nice and clean and not corroded and you have a look inside inside in here to make sure that there's no burning or arcing or color discol discoloration. So we check all the fuses. I know that these fuses are okay because we've got voltage up there. I know that this is okay, so I've checked that one, I've checked this one, everything's okay. I can't see any, any broken wires. Uh, batteries power is getting up there as well. We've got a connector here that we can check. So you want to check all these connectors. You can check these connectors. 
it has been moved by the looks of things. I'll check that. And also what you could do is you could check the ignition switch at the top there. If there's power getting to the ignition switch, if there's no power getting to the ignition switch, you work your way back. No voltage up there, but we know we've got voltage at, at the, the charging socket. In this case, it's an individual circuit on this particular one. Okay. The wires go from here to the charging socket. The shop rider ones, they'll most likely have an individual uh, loom that goes for the batteries or the controller straight up to the charging socket. So it charges through the controller and then into the, into the batteries. Also, what you would check is a circuit breaker, which is here. Matt, it's a circuit breaker here. Let me see if I can find you one. So that's your circuit breaker here. That will pop out uh, and stop power getting um, to the whole scooter. But I know that is working because I'm getting voltage up there. Now, you kind of take these apart. These are sealed units. Sometimes if you look round about the top, they may be rusty because of all the water ingress there. That's why this one's got a rubber cap on, prevent water from getting in there. These can fail... Uh, a few of them, these are usually 40 amp on, on the invoice. Uh, instead of having a push fitting, they've got screws screwing them on there. So I'll have a thread, a threaded part in there. I don't know what size this one is. Oh, that's a 40 amp, but that's a push fit. Uh, so these can fail, even though you're getting power, they can still fail because of the corrosion inside. And I say you can not test that, you just need to replace the part. But you do that if all else fails, and they're not expensive, they're only about a tenner. So that's your circuit breaker, you check electrics. You also want to check, check at the control box at the back. So the control box is behind here. They fit to the, uh, an S drive. This one I'm sure is a 70 amp, 70 amp S drive. That's your light connections and that's your programming connection for a programmer if you so happen to have one. Uh, jerking, customer said it's jerking. We need to check the brush units, but first of all, we need to make sure to find out exactly why we're not getting any power. So here's the ignition barrel here, you can check that, but you'll have to remove all the plastics. We're removing all these screws here. That comes off and you can check to see if you've got voltage up there. Um, as you can see the tiller, when I switch it on, has no power, it's at zero and the horn's not working either, and we have power to the charging socket, which is at the side here. Now, I did notice this strap. That's how I got it. So I think, you know how dirty that is compared to that strap, and there's nothing holding this strap together. So I reckon the repair must have been round about here. And this looks very fresh as well. So I reckon when the guy was working on it, he must have broke that as well. So let me take the battery out. These are big 50 amp and batteries. Okay, let's see some connections here. Right, so what you want to do is take the fuse out, check the fuse. It's nice and clean as you can see. We check the brush, it's easier to gain access. That's your wire for your electric brake. Is it jerking because there's a problem with the brake? Let's have a look here. So that, oh look. Now somebody's been putting tape on here. And as you can see, that's not been located in there properly. Now see these three wires? That's the one, the white one there goes to the fuse at the back. Black, green and white. They'll end up going to the front of the scooter. Now, I need to take this off. Um, I wonder what he's done here. It seems to have seized. <sighs> and there we go. Right, so we want to have a look in here. It's clean. So let's put this on properly. So it doesn't... Oh, look. That's just come out of there. And I didn't even pull it apart. So what you... It looks like maybe he's put a wire on here. This has got a wee retaining hook here. Need to ensure that that's in properly. Let me put this in properly. Right, so that's unhooked in. Let me see what's happened here. I think that could be the problem. 
you're looking to see if they're nice and clean. Let's hook this back together again. Because you may have been doing some work. Let's see if it's hooked together. Right, so it's hooked in. Let's push this together and let's try it. That could be the problem. See, that goes here, but it, it doesn't seem to be doing much. And that's not long enough. Let's move. Right, black to black, red to red. Oh, here we go. What's that? Indicators, hazards. Right, so that's the hazards off. And we'll get a fault code there. The fault code is most likely. Oh, we're in manual. That's us in drive. Let's switch it off and on again. One, two, three, two. Two flashes. Tells us it's a problem. Uh, two flashes. Two beeps. One beep is low battery. Checking the volt voltage is the way up. As we know, we've checked 12.8. Two beeps, problem with the motor. So, so now we know why it's broken. This guy was working on it. Broke that bit of wire there, pulled it out by mistake. And what I'm going to do, which I can do, is usually when the motor connection goes in easy, I can take the motor connection out and plug my, volt, uh, my multimeter on there, do a continuity check on the motor. But I'm going to get a plain screwdriver and undo that brush unit in there. Right. Yeah, there seems some pretty tension on there. The brush in itself is wearing slightly to the side. Need to blow it out because there's a lot of carbon on there. Let me take the other side of the brush in it out. A little bit more tricky this side. Okay, they can have a look at that one. It's a 43 brush, that's a 7mm by 11. The spring seems to be okay. A little bit worn. But as I say, we need to blow that out with uh, some air. Wonder why we're getting a two beep in the motor. So the next thing I'll do is have a look inside the motor to see the colour of it. I need a torch for that one. So let's have a look inside here. Put it into manual. to see, especially when I'm in glasses now because I'm getting old. There's some black bits on it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace the brushes, I'm going to give that a clean with the glass fibre pen, we supply the glass fibre pens, let me switch my torch off. Now what I've done is, I've cleaned the inside of the commutator, I'm going to put a set of brushes back in here. Now when you put these on here, you don't want to force it on, nice and gently does it. It's not just easy to get the back one on.
and that one is not easy whatsoever because the control is in the way Right, that's it in drive, I'll put it in drive, that's it in drive now, let's switch her on. Okay, so I've cleaned the commutator, switched it on, and that's this working, no beep code. So we've got a couple of problems still to sort. That to sort, that the guy broke it when he was repairing something in here, whatever he done. I don't know. He sorted a wire, which one he doesn't work, but everything seems to be working. The new brushes. And it cleaned. Bit of discoloration on them, if you have a look. From one to another. If you can see the difference in colour from the front to the back one. Woman does live at top of a hill, so but usually you'd have thought they both. Ah, yeah, two different colours. Reason unknown. Maybe there's a bit of heat, but that's the commentator cleaned. New set of brushes in there, and we're we're working. Good, sorted. We'll deliver that back tomorrow. So you can see there's a lots of things to check. Lucky that we didn't have to take this plastic work off and go to the ignition barrel, but that's where you would look. That's where you'd follow on uh, if we didn't find this had been pulled out by somebody that didn't know what they were doing. It can happen, but everybody tries their best and everybody tries to help. But when you're dismantling things, if it was working before you done something and it's not working after you've done something, it's most likely something you've done, you know? Just go back, have another look. See how easy it was me just checking this and try and put the retaining clips in. The retaining clips are very important. Because imagine you repairing this for your, for your, your dad or your gran or, or your granddad and he's driving away down the street, you're away at your work and next minute that wire falls out. He'll no be a happy cookie. So I need to sort this, put a bit of tape on it. Fuses are right. Most likely need a, a proper strap to, to hold the batteries in place. And really that's it. I'll give it a once over, check all the other connections. Um, always check as well where the fuses go in, the back side of the wire. I'm no happy the way the manufacturers put this particular one because the fuses flop about and then eventually the wire will break and fall off and that's when, when you need me. So I hope you, in, quite a simple repair, but I hope you enjoyed watching this going through systematically um, what to look for. Uh, so it wasn't just one problem, it's two problems. The jerkiness would have been originally what the customer complained about, i.e. the motor. Uh, and then somebody tried to do something, trying to, oh, I think this wire's broken, I'll quickly join this. Then he pulled that out by mistake. Uh, so there was two problems here, brushes and that wire. Um, but as I say, it could have been more. So if you enjoyed it, great. Like, subscribe. Any questions, put that below. Um, if you'd like me to try and show you something else that you'd like to help with, there's no problem at all. Just down below, I'll try to help you out as much as I can. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You take care and have a nice week. Bye for now.